So how come you see a lot of people with a lot of money, a lot of success, a lot of influence, and then suddenly they fail? How come? What is it? Well, I'll unpack that in this episode of the New Wealth and Wisdom series in Proverbs chapter five, episode five, here in the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here, healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And uh, we are on to this amazing series. One of my favorite things to read is the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes in the Bible from who is widely considered the richest and wisest king who ever lived. So if you haven't subscribed to a YouTube channel, please click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode so you don't miss another episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series. Okay, let's get into it. So I've broken down here three major categories of sports, politics, and business. So earlier this week, Barry Bonds was looked over again and not voted into the Hall of Fame. He had a storied career, a lot of crazy things happened in his career, he set a lot of records, but however, he was involved in a steroid scandal era of Major League Baseball. So, these names here, let's take a look. Barry Bonds, steroids, Michael Vick, illegal dog fighting, Tiger Woods, 12 mistresses, OJ Simpsons, my staff told him to put this word in called alleged, alleged murder, because he was innocent, right? What do all these guys have in common? Some form of scandal took them down. What about politics? What about Clinton and Monica Lewinsky? Well, adultery. Elliot Spitzer, prostitution. People are looking at the last election of campaign finance and business. Scandal, scandal, scandal. Things are there, not there. Voter ID, people are voted in. Secret ballots. A lot of scandals are going on before our very eyes and we're looking to see if they are actually true. Let's look at business. What about Tim Sloan? The Wells Fargo CEO that stepped down because his company created millions and millions of fraudulent accounts so their advisors, their bank advisors, can get bonuses at Wells Fargo. But Steve uh, Easterbrook from McDonald's, he stepped down because he had sex with a, he had consensual sex with a coworker which violated company guidelines and company policy. Not only did he step down, but the board of directors are actually asking him to pay back the salary and the stock that he was paid due to him due to his tenure as a CEO of McDonald's. So what about Bernie Madoff? Biggest Wall Street scandal scam in the history of Wall Street. He ripped off over $64.8 billion, rocked institutions, rocked people's retirement accounts, rocked people's pensions because he lied and he was scamming people. So you're thinking to yourself, Matt, I thought when you became a millionaire, all your problems were solved. You became a billionaire, a lot of problems are solved. That's true. However, what got you there won't keep you there. So the, be the question begs is why do rich people lose everything? Why do rich people get caught up in scandals? Why do rich people seem to lose everything they built their entire life and one thing happens, boom, it's gone. It takes so hard to build wealth. It takes so long to build that success and a track record of a positive and an influential reputation. Next thing you know, one thing happens, boom, it's all gone. How come? So let's take out our Bibles. Let's go to Proverbs chapter five. And this is what I consider a foundational verse for the lessons that I took away from Proverbs chapter five to help you, not only help you gain success, wealth, and prosperity, but also keep it and stay there. So let's take a look at foundational verse here. What I consider a foundational verse, Proverbs chapter five, verse one through six, it reads like this. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips, of the adulterous woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil but in the end she is bitter as gall sharp as a double-edged sword her feet go down to death her steps lead straight to the grave she gives no thought to the way of life her paths wander aimlessly but she does not know it okay he's also be careful also because he's creating an analogy between wisdom and a woman why because king solomon a dad is actually writing these words to his son. And quite frankly, what do most young men think about? A couple things, man, let's break it down. It's obviously money, power, success, and sex, okay? So he's using an analogy to talk to his son about sex. If you ever wondered if the Bible talks about sex, right here. And so King Solomon is giving some direction. So number one, it's easier to give advice than follow it. So here's what King Solomon, how King Solomon is giving counsel to his son. In chapter five, verse 18, it reads like this. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. Okay, notice he didn't say wives of your youth. The wife of your youth. Enjoy the wife 
of your youth. But the wisdom, the wise man, sees, you know, I go past the physical beauty. I'm going into character. And that's what chapter 5 is all about. Because here's the bottom line too as well, which I find ironic with King Solomon giving instruction, known as the wisest and richest king who ever lived. Bottom line, it's easier to give advice than to follow it. Because for those of you that know King Solomon, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4, it reads like this. I checked out. He had 700 wives <laughs> of royal birth and 300 concubines. And his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God as a heart of David, his father, had been. It's a thousand women there, man. It's a, it's a workout, okay? Forget physical workout. That's like a mental workout. Listen, I'm married to one woman. I'm so happy I'm married to Sheena. Whew, but wow, she's a workout, man. It's just like I can only handle one woman and her nuances, okay? And obviously the things that go on in a marriage. I can only handle one. Imagine a thousand. So here's King Solomon giving wisdom and counsel to his son, probably saying, you know what? It's probably best for you to stick with one wife because here's what I've learned. And obviously as First Kings here has mentioned that it led him astray of his walk with God. So here's the bottom line. It's easier to give advice than to follow. So if you're in the type of person giving advice, you got to be careful about giving advice to as well because sometimes you, if you're an influencer, you're a pastor, you're a teacher, you're an executive, you're a manager, you're a parent, you're a coach, if you're giving advice, be sure to also have the double down strength to also follow your own advice. If that makes sense to you and you affirm with me that you're going to do this, please put it in the comment section below this affirmation. I am going to follow my own advice. I am going to follow my own advice. Number two, don't let talent take you where character can't keep you. Let's read here Proverbs chapter 5, verse 7 through 10. It reads like this. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. So in other words, you might get to a certain status. You may get to a certain level of income. You may get to a certain level of savings and stature and success, wealth and prosperity. But if you chose the wrong woman, and by the way, flip, flip it over. If you chose the wrong husband, if you chose the wrong business partner, if you heeded the wrong counsel of somebody else that is not built on character, but just you were enamored by status and, and title and resume versus character, that's what happens to you. So don't let talent take you where character can't keep it. And by the way, I'm the first one to have this as a self-reflection, because for many, many years of my life, I've openly said this many times, I've taken my entire 30s to repay the mistakes of my 20s. Why? Because nobody broke this stuff down to me. I was enamored by people's status. I was enamored about what people were driving. I was enamored about what people were making. I was enamored about people on radio and TV, to the point where one of the biggest mistakes, by the way, we probably put a biggest horror story I've came across, it was a Halloween episode. It was, it was a Halloween episode, right? It was a Halloween episode we put together Check out the biggest mistake I've made in my entire life because I did not heed seeking counsel or seeking people with character. I was just very ambitious in growing my company. I was just very ambitious in growing my finances and I chose wrong and I was judged for it. And what I had to do to prove myself right and to rebuild my reputation and character. I took my entire 30s to repay the mistakes of my 20s. I hope you can learn from my mistake as it comes to this. Number three, leaders, influencers, and wealthy people have a responsibility. So if you say, Matthew, I want to be financially successful. I want to be a leader. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be financially independent. I want to make sure I create a lot of jobs. I want to have a lot of influence in my community. Well, great. Now you have great responsibility. I know this is from Proverbs chapter 15, but I just thought it was appropriate for us to include that in this study because it talks about the people you need to surround yourself with if you consider yourself a leader, influencer, a wealthy person. Let's read what Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22 has to say. It reads like this. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Okay, so you got some big plans. You want to become a multimillionaire. You want to build a company. Okay, who's counseling you? Who's helping you? 
Oftentimes I come across a lot of people and I ask them this question, what do you want in your business? What's your outcome? He says, I want to be financially free and financially independent. So what does that mean? How much money do you need to make on a monthly basis? Well, I don't know. Well, who have you sought counsel from? Well, I'm gonna get involved in this business. I'm gonna get involved in crypto. I'm gonna get involved in insurance. I'm gonna get involved in real estate. I'm gonna get involved in Forex. I'm gonna get involved, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna get involved in something. And my next question is, well, so great. Awesome, I'm glad you have a track and a vision for where you want to go and a vehicle to get you there. Whose counsel are you seeking to help you get in that industry or that product or service to help you get to the next level that has a proven track record of success, that can help you avoid a lot of mistakes that you otherwise would have made, so therefore you can save yourself a lot of time, money, and grief, and avoid going down the wrong path. Sometimes ambition gets us to think that we can do this all by ourselves. Well, sure you can. Up to a certain point. Again, don't let talent take you or character can keep you. So if you find yourself alone as a leader and you're isolated, that's exactly where the enemy wants you. So if this makes sense to you, please put this affirmation below. I am leading responsibly. I am leading responsibly. So number four, seek character over talents, stature, money, positions, promises, etc. Let's go to Proverbs chapter five, two through six. It reads like this. That you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge for the lips of the adulterous woman drip from honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But the end, she is as bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life, her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. So here's the thing, if you're getting all enamored by people's title and stature and talents, oh, they're an author, oh, they're a celebrity, ba 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 oh, they're a millionaire, okay? Listen, there's a lot of people in the neighborhood I was growing up in that had a lot of talent, stature, influence. You know what they're called? Drug dealers. <laughs> you think I'm going to follow them though? So you, you see, some of you guys say, well, of course not. Exactly. By the way, some of you, depending on the neighborhood that you're watching this video, and say, yeah, I look up to the drug dealer. Why? Because they give out a lot of money and they feed a lot of families and they're helping our community. Of course. It's exactly what King Solomon was advising his son not to follow. And some of you guys are saying, well, Matt, you know, it's, it's slower to make wealth that way. I'd rather make it the quick way. Exactly. You've just identified the fast shortcut to death. The fast shortcut because what does Proverbs say? What does King Solomon say here? That path is sweet as honey. It's looking smoother than oil. It's very, very attractive, but it's a short life. It's a life that you constantly got to be looking over your back and you got to ask yourself that question. Do I want to do that? The choice is yours. Last one. Embrace discipline and accountability. How annoying are these two words? But yet you want to embrace it? Let's look at what Proverbs chapter 5, verse 11 through 13 has to say about this. The end of your life, you will groan. When your flesh and body are spent, you will say, how I hated discipline. How my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers and turn my ear to my instructors. So in other words, what he's saying is he's regretting everything. I followed this path and he says, what did I do? I'm older now, I can't get back the years I've spent down the wrong path. What did I do? All the time I hated discipline, it was the right thing for my life. All the times I hated accountability, it was the right thing for my life. Here's a crazy thing about this. It's gonna say, time will tell what your correct choice was. There's another Proverbs I wanna to add to this. Yeah, I know it's in chapter 19, but I thought it was appropriate for the study to get some more understanding of Proverbs chapter five. Let's go to Proverbs 19. Verse 20 to 21, it reads like this. Listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So if you want to build something that's built on a solid foundation, consider what purpose you're fulfilling. Is it a selfish purpose, a self-imposed purpose? Or truly, if you are a faith-based entrepreneur, you say, man, I want to become a faith-based Millionaire, well, then it should be the purpose of God's. Is God's purpose or is it your purpose? By the way, there's nothing wrong with being selfish, but what's the outcome? Is it only for yourself or is it for yourself to bless others? Or is this only for yourself? The choice is yours. You got to pick. So if that makes sense to you, please put it in the comment section below. This affirmation, I am embracing discipline and accountability. I am embracing discipline and accountability Put it in the comment section below. A quick excerpt that uh, I suggest uh, that many of you um, are studying along with me to purchase this Bible, which is the John Maxwell Leadership Bible. By the way, I, I make no money by telling you to buy this Bible, but I think it's just 
pretty uh, beneficial for you to purchase that Bible because John Maxwell, who's my, one of my favorite authors, I read all of his books, I read all of John Maxwell's books, and uh, I like the way he breaks down from the perspective of a leader the different areas of scripture throughout the entire Bible. And it's just not proper. It's just every book, Genesis all the way to Revelations. He breaks down every book of the Bible, every chapter. He breaks down these verses and gives you his feedback from the perspective of a leader. And he put down this graph here in this chapter of Proverbs. On one side, you got talents, gifts, and success. And this person trying to balance character, mores, values, and principles. Sometimes people are all the way over here. Sometimes people say, hey, man, I'm... I'm going to be bouncing my thoughts and ideas off of just talents and gifts and success because I'm enamored by this person's influencer staff. They got a blue check on Instagram, right? They're a celebrity. Oh, I can't believe I'm around this person. Cool. Okay, it's all, all the way over here, okay? But do they have character, morals, values, and principles? Do they? Because if they don't have character, morals, values, and principles, guess what they're going to teach you? They're going to teach you how to get all the talents. They're going to teach you how to get all the money, all the success. They're going to get all that quick. You get there. You'll have success in your life if that's what you follow. But it won't sustain you because there is no involvement of invoking character, morals, values, and principles. So if you look at this chart here, what I am is humble. What I ought to do is rely on God. In the result, you have God's power working for you. What I am is being a visionary of what God is going to have in my life based on my prior, prior life and based on the dreams and goals that God put in my heart, great, you're a visionary. So what do you do? You need to set goals. Why? Because if you set goals, you start putting faith into action and you start manifesting the talents that's deep down inside you. Now it has an opportunity to express itself when you set goals and you do the work to get it. And as a result, you have high morale because, man, I've accomplished this, I accomplished that. It's awesome to have God work behind me and to see what uh, I can do with his skill sets, with his business, with his career, with this, whatever it is that God is putting your way. What I am is also convictional, meaning I'm convicted to following God's word, to following the wisdom from King Solomon given to him by God. So therefore I can do what's right. Not what's convenient, but to do what's right. And sometimes doing the right thing is a hard thing. But when you do that, you have then credibility. You know, oftentimes if not only said the word yes in my life, but what I found myself doing based on filtering my decisions through this process, I said the word no more times than I have said yes. It's worked out for me because I've seen a lot of people who said yes to the things I would say no through because I've bounced things only not off of counselors in my life, wise counselors in my life who have been there, done that, who are also following God's word. But also, I've taken a moment to also create a bigger process on decisions before I get into it because I know once I make a decision, my reputation is going to be based off that the decision. Well, there you have it. This is a big reason why rich people, people of status, fame, celebrity, and influence fall because they don't have the character, they don't have the values, morals, and principles, the foundation of what to build it on. So if you want lasting success, if you're out there saying, man, I want great generational wealth, well, consider what King Solomon's words here have to say in Proverbs chapter 5. Before I wrap up, I want you guys to watch these videos here, catch up on the previous chapters 1 through 4. We'll put the thumbnails right here, so therefore you can watch the previous videos, one through four of the Wealth and Wisdom series here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. That being said, I love knowing your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? You don't agree with King Solomon? All good. Put it in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking. And by the way, we appreciate all the comments we've been getting thus far about your insight and how these have been helping you pursue a life of purpose, wealth, success, and prosperity. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow the business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.